Hello everyone and welcome to the Adam Josh Oral Brog webisode number 59. I think we're going to call this one how to figure anyone out. And before we get into it as a little update, at uh, 2.30 p.m. today I went for a walk and I brought my binoculars uh, just in case I actually what happened was I went for a walk and then I was I came back and then grabbed my binoculars because I saw some guys chemtrailing the sky so and then I took out the binoculars and was looking at them and again at 2.30 I saw one plane go that way another plane go that way and then uh, at 3 o'clock I still saw them, and even right now, there's fresh lines out in the sky. And I'm not sure if it was chemtrailing today so much as cloud seeding, and I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference with an untrained eye from the ground, but uh, the whole sky like over this way is all just white haze. And what originally prompted me to do that was I was walking and I looked up at the sky and I see like a bank of clouds fizzing out towards like one end towards a clear sky and I'm looking at that I'm like that does not look natural you see like a bank of clouds there's no storm coming in and it was almost like a clear line and I thought I thought I don't know if that's some sort of technology that I don't know about being used to hold off clouds or push clouds so that's when I got the binoculars out and took a look and saw a bunch of chemtrails going on. I, so it's still going on. I'm not going to do endless updates on it on, on the A-Job. Uh, 55 that I did, uh, I did I think three or four updates and my point is is that I can keep doing that uh, every day. This doesn't stop and it hasn't stopped and I sort of covered in, in the last update that I would encourage people who feel the same way I do to email your mayors or congresspeople or representatives or whoever and, or take photos, get samples if you can, find a way to test it and start suing people and holding them accountable. I don't know what else to say anymore. I mean, uh, for people who are still living in denial or some sort of la-la land where uh, chemtrails don't exist, uh, you know, it's just, that's not the case anymore. It doesn't matter what you, if you believe they don't exist, they do. It's, it's a clear documented phenomenon uh, on uh, all over the world, not just in the United States or Canada, so, or Britain. Aside from all that, what I wanted to talk about today was how to figure anyone out. And I'm going to put on some music. Let's go. And for this particular blog, I'm expecting it to take probably about 20, 30 minutes. For this blog, blog, brog, I'm going to have to lose I'm going to be able to I'm going to have to be able to talk openly and freely with you and you're going to have to not take it in a Adam's arrogant or spouting off all his nonsensical knowledge just for, for the sake of hearing himself. I guess I mean there is because when I talk sometimes on video, I'm always second guessing myself, and you can see like my brain. I can you know watch my own videos, and I see my brain is working faster than my mouth. So like in my head, you know, like you wake up in the middle of the night and you have a clear thought, and then you try to express it, and it comes out differently. Or musicians hear songs in their head, and it sound crystal clear, and then they translate it into their music. So a lot of musicians' uh, music doesn't start. Uh, just with their song, they hear it in their head first. Um, my point behind all that is people who are watching this are going to have to give me this blog, brog, and not uh, and not judge me in that sense because I'm going to talk 
about things that I've experienced and freely and openly. So don't judge me for this brog. I'm trying to be trying to help and I'm trying to be sort of educational and also to improve on my own understanding. So with that said, I need to be able to talk freely on this blog without second guessing everything I say. So I might make a whole bunch of like verbal mistakes trying to articulate what I'm saying and I will backtrack and it might seem a little weird. With that said, how to figure everybody, anybody out. <clears throat> I grew up uh, and my dad my dad was a salesman for Roundtree Macintosh with, which later got annexed by um, Nestle Nestle Roundtree Macintosh made the toffee made smarty skittles made mirage and all that all that to say that my dad was a salesman and I love my dad to pieces he watches these eight jobs dad I love you he asked me to record uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond as a cover, so I might do that. Not today, though. I have other things to do after this, but maybe tomorrow. <clears throat> so, my dad still is a salesman and was a salesman as I was growing up. So, one of the first books that I can remember that he gave me to read was How to Win Friends and Influence People, and you can look that up yourself. But I think I was probably about seven, eight, nine years old uh, when I was reading... Uh, books on psychology and then throughout uh, school and high school I excelled in programs like so in, in classes like sociology and uh, it's always been an interest of mine to, to study how the mind works and how people are um, I'm also a Scorpio so I know that that's sort of inherent in a lot of Scorpios to want to understand people or to be to feel powerful or dominate people. So I can I can understand that I have these programmed sort of desires in me to understand things and and there's a limit though too to that because I don't feel like there's some things that I don't need to know or some things that I don't need to understand. But anyway. I started reading books on psychology at a pretty early age, is my whole point. And um, the book was called, what did I say, How to Win Friends and Manipulate People? I think that's what it was called, How to Win Friends and Inf Influence People. But what it, but there was a whole chapter, I remember, on manipulation. And, how, and I remember pretty clearly uh, one of the instructions was, you know, to make a make a uh, make a strong emotional attachment, an emotional commitment. And so, I think you know, trying to put those things into practice in some of my early relationships that I had when I was growing up, like dating and all that. You know, I made trying to put those things into practice. It's sort of, you know, you can see the effects of it, where like it would work in the sense that you could have people. Uh, falling all over you but then if you don't want that in the long run it's sort of like a mini victory and in the end you don't really those type of things don't really uh, appeal to me wow my brain is going in a thousand different directions right now so how to figure anybody out I think we have to start with where to start? Uh, when you look at somebody, yeah, this is where I wanted to start. I remember I had this because I woke up in the middle of the night and I had this thought, like, how am I going to even explain this? But like, I'm not the best at figuring people out, but I do think that I have an ability that a lot of people don't because maybe people aren't as attuned, or I, I think that you can be and train yourself to be more tuned in tune. And, and that's what uh, this video and others like it are all about. But uh, how can you... Uh, how can you... 
be more sensitive is, uh, yeah, how can you figure people out is one, you gotta have to be more, you, you have to be a little bit more sensitive. So, I would recommend by starting, if you're trying to figure people out, say you just met some, per some person, what you need to recognize, first of all, is that every human is what, you know, every human that you meet uh, is like you in a lot of ways. Uh, in the sense that getting to know somebody and, how, and figuring somebody out is knowing about them and knowing what makes them tick and getting inside of them, inside of their mind rather, and, and uh, understanding them. Now, a good way to start is to put people, is to not put people, but make a folder, sort of like a folder on your desktop. Make a folder in your mind for each person that you meet. And I find that this is a really helpful way to categorize all your information and not get it confused uh, with other people. And what you don't realize is that your brain subconsciously already does this. Like, right now as I sit here, my subconscious is absorbing all the information around me, the lights and the sounds and all that. And much like your eyeballs, when you're focusing on something, the peripherals are sort of fuzzy, but what you're focused on is focused, if you're focusing. So taking that and extrapolating from it some information that we can find out about human psychology is that uh, we can have all this information about various people in the background, but what matters is what we're focusing on. So how do people that know a whole bunch, I used to wonder how, how, how people that know a whole ton of stuff or, or I, would, I would wonder how people who are incredibly intelligent walk around with that big head and uh, and all that information in their brain and the, the, the answer is is that uh, when you, you're you know going about your daily life you're not focused on all the things that you know you're focused on whatever you're focused on so starting with opening up a folder on a person on any person starting from ground zero from the get-go uh, things that everybody has in common is one thing is that we all as you, if you're a human you have a left and a right brain your left is the more structured rigid side of like planning and and the right hemisphere of the brain is your artistic side and in the center of all that is the pineal gland which pumps out dimethyltryptamine while you sleep and you have hallucinations uh, that you call dreams so people dream at night so right from the get-go whether you're this person that we're trying to figure out is white, black, Hispanic, or whatever. You, we already know that we already have some things in common. Uh, you already know that that person has a left brain and a right brain and uh, a pineal gland. You know that they have a body and the body needs to eat food. Uh, the body needs to drink and the body uh, needs food and shelter. And as far as girls go, uh, it's not just girls that like money and power. You know, when I was younger, I always thought, like, why do girls in high school date older guys? And now it's sort of a little bit more clear, now that I'm about to turn 30, that it's not just that they wanted that fatherly figure like we all used to say back in high school. It's more just like everybody wants money and power. Every, it's not just young girls in high school. Everybody sort of intrinsically realizes that money affords you everything else in life. So if you are somebody uh, like 25 years old dating a 16 year old, the 16 year old girl is going to look at you as a provider, as a somebody who can provide money and power. So it's not just young girls who like providers. Everybody seems to like. Who doesn't like providers? or money and power, or wealth and power, I should say. So, 
another thing that getting getting past those first few steps on getting to how to figure anyone out uh, one is open up a folder in your mind about that person you know so label it and like I said when you're when you're in a bar type scenario or like a filled room type scenario your subconscious is already doing that so I'm just saying let's embrace it some people go with like more organic ways and sort of all they're like having files scattered all over their desk type people and they're just like oh I don't know that person oh yeah I ran into that person but what you don't realize is that your subconscious is gathering information about people all the time I said in a blog a while ago that I want to know everything I want to know everything about everyone and there's a lot of truth to that and uh, but again there's some things that I don't care to know about but then I guess the ability to make that decision would still be had if I didn't know everything because you'd have the ability to keep things in the periphery and are in the peripheral and not focus on them all the time. I'm not the smartest person in the world but I do know a, a few things about people. So <clears throat> things that we all have in common are important to keep in mind when you're trying to figure people out and uh, one major thing that we ha all have in common, like I said, is that we're all human beings, we're all on Earth, and Earth is spinning through the universe. So instantly, if you've created this folder in your mind, you could have like a diagram here. Um, you know, so if you had like uh, person X, person X, and then you open that folder like so, so, and then you start filling in information on that folder. So what we know about, because figuring, figuring people out or figuring anyone out starts with knowing about them and knowing your similarities and differences and knowing what makes them tick. So. Instantly, what information do we have when we open this folder about your person X or whoever it is? Well, instantly, you know, we all know that this person is a human, uh, has a left brain and a right brain, uh, an artistic side and a structured side. Uh, the person most likely dreams, needs to eat and drink and sleeps and all these things, wants the basic things that every human wants, food, clothing, and shelter. So meeting somebody that you don't know, we say we don't know them, but you actually know a lot about this person who you haven't even talked to yet. This is the first step to understanding and figuring people out, in my humble estimation, is knowing that when you haven't even met somebody, your brain already has deciphered this subconsciously, but I'm telling you, let's start focusing on this if you're thinking about you know, how to figure people out then let's make our awareness aware of it and and when we are aware that we're trying to figure people out you you will also reinforce that information and your brain will automatically start to fill in information in that folder like when you stare at a blank wall your mind automatically starts thinking of things to put on that wall or if I say right now the word elephant, pretty simple, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of an elephant. Even if, even if I say, do not think of an elephant right now. So you see what I'm saying? I'm talking past verbal communication. I'm speaking about how the human brain works. Don't think of a red balloon right now. Do not think of a red balloon. See what I'm saying? You can't help but think of it. So outside of our verbal communication, I'm, I'm going past the verbs and the, the noise in my throat and talking to your brain and to your heart. That's first lesson. <laughs> Second lesson is words are seed bearing fruit that comes from the soil of the heart. And this is a lesson and a revelation that I've had on my own that nobody's taught me 
other than maybe the some higher spiritual force, you know. But I've speaking spirituality, like I've I've of course been heavily interested in spirituality because I've been interested in psychology and understanding how the brain works, and I like to study people in general. And uh, so I've read the Quran three times. I've read the what's called the Bible, I think, 13 or 14 times now. And I'm actually in Psalms right now on my way through it once again. Like, I read it at night before I go to bed. Gets your mind off of everything else and go to sleep. So, um, words, I know it sounds a little religious is why I said it, but words are seed-bearing fruit coming from the soil of your heart. Now, the reason I say that is because you've met this person X. You have this folder that you've opened on them in your mind. And you're filling it in with all this information and they haven't said a word yet. So now, when they talk, you're automatically filling in more information. Like, say, they say, hello, you know, my name is Daphne, uh, and you say, hi, my name's Giorgio Armani, and she says, uh, you ask her what, what she does, and she says, well, I'm really into catering, but, you know, it's always been my dream to do designer uh, clothing line products, and really all I want is to be on the cover of a magazine, but when I was younger, my dad uh, told me that I could never do that, and he hit me a lot. And as I get older, I realize that my, you know, and she just keeps going on. Automatically, whether you you know it or not, your brain is sort of filling information into this folder. So about Daphne, we can already find out a few things. One is that subconsciously or consciously, what she doesn't realize is that she's she's telling you all this information because she wants you to know it about her this is the, the process of communication that most people overlook so when somebody's talking to me that I don't know uh, I'm asking myself why do they want me to know this so Really good example, maybe the Daphne one wasn't that good, but when you're talking to like say a drug addict, I lived in Saskatoon for a while and I knew some people who were addicted to meth, crystal meth, and I hadn't seen one of them in a while. And uh, I went out cross country one year uh, and I stopped in there uh, with my girlfriend at the time and I said, hey, let's see this, this uh, guy that I know. And one of the first things out of his mouth, hey Adam, nice to see you, how long? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a long, a long while. Um, I'm like, yeah, how have you been? And he goes, uh, you know, I've been good. Totally off that stuff now. But he's rocking his jaw. Totally off that stuff now. Totally quit that. It's totally out of my life. And I'm looking at that as I haven't seen this guy in two years. And the first thing that he wants to say to me is that he's quit meth. Now, to me, what I notice right away is that he's he wants me to know that so the, you have to ask yourself why does he want you to know that do you see what I'm saying so like people who are insecure you know those classic people who are insecure on the inside you know the big muscle guys they'll they'll work out and they'll the usually the bully is one of the most insecure people on the playground um, so somebody who is still doing drugs all the time and doesn't want somebody else to know it may say like, you know, totally off that stuff. But the fact that he's going out of his way to, to have you know that, to me, is a dead ringer that he's lying. He's trying to make me believe that. So if you're sort of one step ahead of people, and if you can go past their words and realize that words are the seed-bearing fruit from their heart my example being so the bottom here is your heart is the person's innermost being not maybe a physical heart but like 
their innermost being that's operating this body with the left and right hemisphere and two arms and all that, the, the real you, the, the, wherever you are located, right? So the heart being your innermost being and your words being the leaves that come out of it, or the fruit rather. So the fruit falls and you're speaking it. And the fruit falls and lands in other people's hearts. So some, some, like right now, what I'm, the words that I'm saying to you are fruit with seed in it. And if it's resonating with you and you're saying, wow, Adam's right, like I could use these things, then, uh, sorry, I just realized I planted, uh, can't remember what that is. I planted a seed and it's growing. This makes me really curious because uh, there's two different seeds that I planted. Oh, cool! You know what this is? I planted, uh, these are lychee seeds. Lychee is so good. I planted uh, lychee seeds and uh, two of them are sprouting. Oh, that's going to be so wicked. Because lychee is from China. Right? And imagine if I can get my own lychee here. Let me just put some water in it. Sorry about that, I'm totally sidetracked, but that's awesome. If I get my own light chi, I'll make sure to show it on the, uh, on the brog. That's sweet. Man, I hope that thing grows. We might have to get another pot. Damn. So. Just like the lychee seed they're growing, uh, words are seed bearing fruit. Most people don't know that. I'm talking past verbal communication here and speaking in truth to you, to your heart. So I'm telling you when, you when you meet somebody, you have to go past their words and their facade and look at the real them. Now, if you, speaking about all this though, if you tell people that you're trying to figure them out, uh, Instantly what will happen, no matter what they say, is that they will click something in their brain and they'll say, this person is opening a folder on me and packing information in it about me, like a fact-finding mission. Now you've ruined whatever chances you had of having a natural flowing conversation with them and now they're filtering everything through this knowledge of knowing that you're trying to figure them out. So. Uh, the mistake that I've made in the past is, one, is talking too much, and two, letting people know that I know what they're doing. Now, it's not always good to play ignorant, and it's not always good to be quiet, but there's a scripture that says uh, in a, there is ruin in a flood of words, and loose lips sink ships is an expression, a popular uh, proverb, and there's a lot of truth to that. We, I, I, I uh, you know, the businesses that I work with, uh, we can say that 100% clearly with no amount of doubt in my mind that the more you talk in business, sometimes the, the worse things get. So the, le the, the less you talk, the better usually. Customers come in, they don't want to know your whole life story. Like some customers, like, some customers that come in here, you know, uh, are had a bad day. Some people, their husband is cheating on them. Some people, their grandma just died. Some people are having a great day. Some people just won the lottery. So there's there's a lot of truth to that expression. Take the temperature of the the ether or the room before you start talking to anybody. And now, when I've aired in that sense, I always people will say. You know, Adam didn't seem friendly enough to me. And sometimes I get accused of being uh, sort of nasty to people. Or not nasty, but like closed or not too friendly. And my problem is because the way my mind works, and as I'm explaining to you how to figure people out, that's sort of how my mind is sort of operating on a daily basis. Uh, not just with folders on people, but folders on businesses, folders on different things. Um, like right now, I'm not thinking about all the different cars I've driven, or I, I've driven about 10,000 different vehicles in my life or more, and I'm not bragging, it's just the way it is. And so, like, 
when I think of a car, I open up that folder in my mind and think of everything about that car. Or I run different businesses. So, and some people say like, oh, you can only do one thing and do it really well, and that's a lie because you know the most the, the most well wealthy people in the world are into various businesses. Bill Gates just doesn't run Microsoft anymore, and uh, the Rothschilds just don't do banking. The Rockefellers just don't do this. George Bush family is into oil and construction and all these other things. Halliburton, blah, 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 blah. So you know that, I know that, but it's sometime, for some reason, in the slave culture that we're in, you do one thing, do it your entire life, work at GM or whatever, die working at Tim Hortons or die working at Wendy's or die working at... My point is, you have two hands. This is in this body that you're operating that has five fingers on each side. So you are wired to multitask. Now, how you multitask, how I multitask, is I don't have all these folders open at the same time going off in my mind. No, I have every folder that I'm not using closed and over to one side of my mind, and it's I'm not even thinking about it. Like, your memories. If you want to start plumbing the depths of your memory, like, let's start with your childhood, right? How was your childhood? That, like... Were you even thinking about your childhood before I just said that? Probably not. So, like, do you remember that time you were at the park with your mom or your dad? And all automatically your mind starts going, yeah, I remember that time that I was at, my, at a park with my mom and my dad. So that's how your mind works. It's not, you're not, you don't wake up thinking about, man, I remember that time that my, I went to that park. So I'm, I'm, I'm unnecessarily right now explaining to you how your human memory works. And it's not just limited to you. This is what I'm saying, is that as humans, we all share these common things. So how to figure out anybody, how to figure anyone out. This is getting to our, getting to the point of it. The other thing I would want to say about figuring people out is uh, we'll, we do what we want. Um... A good, I mean, it's hard. It's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow, but like, you have to realize when you're going past people's words and looking at their intent and their heart that people, despite their words, because sometimes they're using words to throw you off, will do what they want. Say this, like I said repeatedly on camera that. I'm planning to cut caffeine out of my diet when I turn 30 in two months, and that's true. And I do plan on doing that. I'm one of the few people that you'll ever meet that when I say something, I really do want to do it. And it's not like I'll just say, oh, like, oh whatever, I just said that. No, 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 no. Like, if I say, I, I'm the type of person where if I say I'm going to do something, it irritates me to no end <clears throat> if I can't do it. So the most of the time, I'm not going to bother saying anything unless I know that I can do it. So when I say I'm cutting out you know, tea, coffee, and alcohol and all that by my 30th birthday. I'm taking it seriously. But in that same sense, this is uh, a glass of an energy drink. So, now, I know that in 30 days I'm not going to be drinking these anymore, but right now I'm going to. So what does that tell you? It tells you that right now I want to do this. I want to drink this. Now, if I said to you... I don't want to drink this. If I said on camera, I'm not going to drink this. I don't want to drink this. And then I did this. What does that tell you? You have to differentiate between what people say and what people do. So there's an expression. Um, to look at the a man's actions and not his words or there's an expression to look at the fruit of the tree this particular tree over here once again doesn't have any fruit on it right now because it's sort of bloomed and out of season i got it last year it's a kalancho plant it just flowers is really all it does nice red flowers i'm super stoked about that lychee the lychee that i had was so good oh we've got a few of them here I planted like five seeds in here, just hoping that one of them would sprout, and it looks like one did. And it's actually budding out at the top. I'm so stoked about that. Stoked, I'm stoked, man. I'm gonna go grab my board.
Okay, so now I need to look up how to take care of a lychee plant. Because I, I actually want the fruit. So my point is, is that um, if the if the fruit of the tree is bad fruit, then that says something about the tree. If the fruit is good, then the tree is good. So we're classifying good and bad fruit. If you pick up an, uh, a rotten tasting, rotten tasting piece of icky icky nom noms off a tree and somebody asks you how does that taste and you say Ugh, maybe you want to throw up it's icky icky nom noms uh, and then another one grows and you're like well I don't know the first one didn't taste good but then we'll try the second one and you try the second one and it's worse after a while your friends and you would all know hey this tree has bad fruit now if this tree is parading around if trees could talk be like I'm good fruit baby I'm the best there is and you'd be like, yeah, and this, this tree's all talk because we know that he, his fruit tastes like crap. If this tree is a pastor being like, you got to come to my church on Sundays and tithe to me while I go across the world uh, and preach the gospel. And if that tree is talking good talk, but you taste that fruit and you realize, wow, this, this, this pastor has five different ex-wives. He's got kids on every continent. He's involved in litigation on every continent, from his peers and from other people, for theft, for misuse of funds, and all his ex-wives say that he has a drug problem. I mean, that's some pretty nasty tasting fruit for a tree that's spouting off that it's, I'm the best there is, and oh, bless God, you know. So, you have to look at the fruit of someone's, of someone's, uh, someone's fruit more so than their words because a lot of people are all talk uh, people like me who I do talk quite a lot obviously <laughs> but if you know me like if you knew me and you were sitting here right now unless we were having a conversation like this or if unless I knew you we would never be able to have like first of all I wouldn't have a conversation like I'm having right now with, a, with this camera with somebody I didn't know because, as I, as I was saying at the beginning, when I don't know anybody, that folder is pretty much empty. So I don't like wasting my time, in that sense, on people that are interested in things that I'm not interested in or will never hear me anyway. So it's, and I guess in that sense I have been judgmental in the past, but usually I'm right, so because I don't tend to judge people right away, I allow that folder to be blank with a few things about that person that I automatically know, like the food and the drinking, and uh, you need to do both of those things, food, shelter, and uh, we're all human beings, and uh, we're all here in the same spot, and et cetera, et cetera, left, right brain, and dreaming. And so people's motives, are, I guess, another thing to talk about. Um, once you sort of realize that in the culture that we live in, money money and, and wealth provides you the luxury to do everything else, you sort of realize really quickly <laughs> that uh, most everybody is money motivated. Most everybody wants wealth. Because you realize if you have wealth, you have shelter. If you have wealth, you have food. If you have wealth, you can do what you want. Um, power is the ability to do what you want. So some people when they pray, they're really just praying to power. You can you can picture people, you know, those good, well-meaning religious people praying to money or pay, praying to power. Oh, one day I hope that I can get that shit about a Hyundai. One day I could get that breakthrough miracle and get that money. And they're praying to money, some of them. I mean, we all make idols in our minds and that's that's the bottom line about that is that uh, whether you say you believe in one God or I believe in another as far as religions go when you're idolizing a God when you're sort of like rather making it in your mind making a God in your mind 
whether or not you know everything about this deity that you think you know that you've never met in person or whatever you're projecting things like feminists usually have uh, a feminine god and macho men males have like you know a male deity and etc etc fleas probably have a flea god and dogs probably have a dog god and canine heaven we have a human looking god you know etc etc and uh, we, that's us projecting what we think onto this folder called that we call God and filling it with information that we assume that God would be like, thus creating an idol. So if you believe in a God that's created this entire universe, then you have to understand that he, she, that force is so far removed from what you think about him, her the force. <laughs> um, I mean, here we are, human beings on Earth, limited to our terrestrial understanding and our vague knowledge of the cosmos that we have. I think uh, Thomas Edison said at best, humans will know 1% of anything. Not 1% of everything, but 1% of anything. And the beginning of wisdom is to know how much you don't understand. And I'm not saying that I understand everything. I have a, a hunger in me that would like to know everything. I do realize that now. And I think that I know people and I'm willing to learn more about people, which is really important. To always be teachable, always be willing to learn. And as far as I go, I want the truth. And that is a radical belief in this culture that we live in, to just want the truth. And when people say, what do you think? I say, I want the truth. I want to know the truth of it. If the truth is this or the truth is that, then that's the truth. If somebody comes in here and says, Adam, is the light on or is it off? Well, the switch is in the on position and there's lights on, so I'm going to say the light is on. Now, if somebody come in, comes in here and says, well, theoretically speaking, if you go back long enough, at one point that light was off. And where does that light really go? So technically speaking, the light really is off right now. And that may sound good, and it will probably divert a lot of New Age type thinking. Yes, the light is really off. By Jove, the light is off. And the person who came in there had a lot of, and said that, had a lot of alphabets, a lot of letters after their name. The light is really off. But some things come down to definites. And that's the unfortunate thing that a lot of these high-minded, highbrow people don't seem to understand. That they're, People say, well, what is truth? Well, if, is the light or is the light is the light on or is it off? The truth is, in this room, it's on right now. In the greater scenario, the greater picture, in, the light isn't on in every room everywhere. And there's a lot of places right now that don't have the light on. Those are all truths. But for this particular room, right now, the light and circuit is on. So that would be the truth. So that's the truth. If somebody comes in here and says to you, I just had a revelation. Oh, it just came to me. Bam! Right through me sideways. The light in this room is off. You can say, you're a liar. You're full of crap. I don't care what sort of revelation you had. The light is clearly on. The circuit's on. The light's on. And we can see that with our eyeballs and we know it. So, there is truth out there. Uh, like some people say, there's no such thing as flying saucers. Some people say, there is such thing as flying saucers. Some people say, it's aliens. Some people say, it's blah, blah, blah. I've seen photos of man-made USAF and Nazi flying bell flying discs. So, if all the photos that I saw out of all the freaking photos that you can find on Google, if one of them is real, then the truth is, there are flying discs. That's, that's the truth. Right? And of course there's man-made flying discs. So the truth is, there really are such things as UFOs. And that's the end of it. You know, that's the end of the conversation. There really are such things as UFOs and man-made flying discs. And of course a UFO would just be an unidentified flying object. The problem with the English language is it's getting so... Orwellian and backwards that uh, you can sort of use English to, to mean anything and uh, the use of words 
and the way you use them can mean anything and be open to interpretation. Know what I mean? So, how to figure anyone out? I think I've given you a pretty good start to figuring people out. You can tell what people like and what people are interested in by the things that they do, not so much the things that they say. So if somebody says to you, I don't watch TV, you know, I hate TV, and they're trying to impress you and say, no, I don't watch TV, I don't watch sports. But then every time you hang out with them, they're watching TV and watching hockey. It doesn't really matter what they say. The truth is that they like sports and they like hockey and they like watching TV. And that's the fine. That's, that's fine. That's the truth. That's the fruit of, the, of their life. <coughs> Pardon me. So, how to understand and figure people out is you need to look past the facade of words and the facade of things that people put up as smoke screens and look at the real them and realize that this person that you're trying to figure out isn't their body, the person isn't their left or right brains, the person isn't the clothes that they have on or the job that they have, the person is inside all of that or outside is consciousness, is a spirit having this experience using that body that you're looking at to experience life as the spirit consciousness sees fit. Like when you cut off somebody's arm, they're still that person. When you cut off somebody's leg, they're still that person. Or if somebody were to, were, were to lose all their limbs, They'd still be that person. You can even have a heart transplant and still be the same you. Although there is such thing as cellular memory. People have found in, and it's been documented in heart transplants that they start having memories of the previous, the donor. But, so far as we can tell so far, you can't do a brain transplant and still be the same person. I don't know if that's been done, but I'd imagine that if you took the brain from me and put it into somebody else that... Uh, either one of us would die, both of us would die, or I would now be in that other body, which would be sort of a trip, right? Yeah, so the, the how to figure people out is one, to listen to what people say, and two, look at what people do and three, realize that when somebody's talking to you, or even in their actions, there's body language and the verbal language, both are used to convey messages to you. In which case you have to ask yourself, why is this person trying to get me to believe this about them? Are they trying to get me to believe... Like, some males or females go around talking to everybody about how they're such a victim. Now, telling their victim stories. Now, are they telling you these stories because they haven't told them enough in their life? Because they felt like the hundredth... 17th time that they told the story would finally release them of that whatever they went through or are they telling it because they want you to know that about them or they're telling it so that you know to feel sorry for them or that you know they're a victim like this question is to ask yourself right those pompous people that walk around your bosses and all that walking around all high and mighty and they tell you Look, I'm the owner of this company, and you work for me, and that's how it is. You know, They're trying to get you to understand something. And if those cocky peacock type people that walk around like that, you wonder, are they so insecure that I don't know that they're my boss? That I don't know that they're the only place or whatever? So real power and real authority... Uh, is a little bit different than the, the proud peacock type cocky or look at me, you have to look at me authority. Uh, I'm trying to think that there is a quote. 
Sylvester Stallone, I think, said it. Uh, people go around in a circle and 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 and, and something, and then the real power stands in, in the middle and knows. I mean, one second, I'll look that up, and that'll be the Adam Joshua barrage for today. This is going to bug me if I don't figure it out. And while we're on the topic, I can't handle Google Instant. Every time I go to Google, search settings, take off Google Instant, and I have to keep doing that because I delete my browsing history when I'm done. Or when you restart your computer. Sylvester Stallone. I'm going to Sylvester Stallone's Twitter account and trying to figure out if that's where I read it. There we go. We all dance around in a ring and suppose, but truth sits in the middle and knows. Life is playing A in the dark with no referee, pal. We all dance around in a ring and suppose, but truth sits in the middle and knows. That's a good quote. Because uh, some of the most influential and powerful people that I've met, you wouldn't be able to recognize them. From anybody else, they don't walk around in suits and ties and they don't go out of their way to, to make sure that you know how powerful and important they are. A lot of these people look like average people. I've frequently talked with multi-millionaires and people who other, otherwise people would be like, oh, wow, they're so important. But uh, they, the people that I respect at least, they know who they are. And they don't, need, they don't feel that they need to tell you who they are. And they don't feel that they need you to see who they are. Imagine for a second being all powerful or being the creator incarnate. Or imagine being so powerful. And then imagine the frustration of other people not knowing who you are. And that's sort of petty on your part. To stoop so low and in, be in, as insecure as to think that you have to show them how powerful you are. These little puny humans, they need to know how powerful I am. Why? Or try to think of having all power and all money and all wealth that you could have. The ability to create. And to have all that and be alone. Fun, right? You have that feeling of, other people should know how great I am. Other people should know how awesome life is. And that I can make it. It's weird to think about being unlimited in scope. So know yourself, know who you are, know your surroundings. And that will help you to figure out other people. This has been one really weird Adam Josh Oral Brog. And thanks for tuning in. Tell your friends to get a job. Happy birthday to my friend uh, Zach. What else now that I can remember it? 
uh, a warning to all those people on the uh, East Coast. Mayor Bloomberg of New York City is uh, requiring mandatory evacu evacuations in the low-lying areas, of, like in the A-class section of uh, Manhattan and New York. So you should check. Uh, if you're in New York watching this, uh, you should be in the low-lying areas. Uh, if you're there, you should be getting out. Uh, least of all for the flooding, but I mean, they're saying that it's illegal if you don't, uh, it's the law to, to evacuate, so it's illegal if you stay behind. I don't know what sort of penalties they're going to be. If, it's crazy. It's crazy. I check out uh, Dutch Sense's YouTube channel for more on that uh, crazy weather stuff that's going on. But the truth is, is that we're living in a time now where there are people creating and manipulating weather. And we can avert and move this storm away, have the technology to diffuse it and move it completely away, probably. I think, I know the truth is that of the six, as, as of the 60s, uh, we were able to seed clouds uh, in Vietnam. And uh, you can look up uh, the YouTube movie Weather Wars and see the truth of that for yourself. So it's crazy. We're living in a weird, a weird time, and that's the truth. But in the end, I think it'll all work out. <laughs> Thanks, take care everybody, and uh, tell your friends once again.